Welcome back to the channel today, Darkstar. So Darkstar is a game that's made by a friend of mine, uh, Jim Oriskany. You'll see him probably in the comments below in a lot of my videos. He's a great, great friend. Um, huge supporter of me, which is great. And uh, he's part of SidRep Podcast, who have cool merch like this and even have podcasts occasionally. You know, if you're not just into the merch. Ah, it's water, don't worry. Anyway, check out SidRep Podcast. Uh, they do modern military wargaming. They also do a little bit of past military wargaming. Jim and I have done some, I think it was Trenton. We did Trenton, uh, so American War of Independence. Um, there's lots of World War II, uh, Panzer, Panzer Commander, Panzer Blitz. Uh, Jim and I mostly play Valor and Victory. I think we've done, we've done a lot of Vietnam. We've done some super modern. I think 2006 was the earliest we went with Australians in Timor. So yeah, it's, it's a great, great channel. Uh, the podcast is great, painting tutorials, they've just done some Russian BMP videos. So yeah, definitely check Sitrep Podcast out. So Darkstar is a sci-fi naval game. Uh, the rules are free, they're available on Beast of War, put a link below. Uh, Jim did a phenomenal job putting them together in a PDF. Thank you very much, it's a great game. So, the way these reviews work, five things I like. Three things that, I, not necessarily I don't like, but they're sort of a bit, you know, not the most ideal things. And then something that makes the game really special. Uh, beyond, of course, the fact that <laughs> Jim is a personal friend of mine. That's special to me, makes the game special to me. But let's see what can make it special to someone else. So, let's get started. Number one, it's on a hex map. So, one of the things I really don't like about a lot of games, especially naval games, really, this is why X-Wing annoyed the crap out of me. Um, and Armada too, for, you know, is... You're, you have hexes, so you just worry about your facing and then your speed. That's all you care about. Um, facing and velocity, technically. Anyway, you don't have to be going, well, I want to turn 34 degrees or 36. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? You don't have to worry about that. There's no worry about um, getting it particularly right, moving the piece, bumping it accidentally, and now you have no idea where your ship's meant to be. Uh, so you just sort of put it back generally where it was. You've ruined the whole purpose of moving in the game. It's not like that. It's all hexes. The hexes are all numbered. At least Jim's hexes are, and I'm sure yours can be too. Uh, if only you believe. Anyway, uh, so the hexes really help keeping track of where everything is, where everything's facing. No, ambigu no ambiguity. You're never going to put a protractor down and be like, ha, one degree in, copper full broadside, one degree out, take nothing. It's very easy to, to keep track of. Number two. The book is filled with charts, and everything in the book is quite clear. So it's laid in, in a way where you have sort of section 1, A, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Section 2, A, 1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So you can sort of find everything. Um, Two Fat Lardies does their stuff like this. And I personally really like it, because it's like, uh, I've got to turn to, to torpedoes. Where are torpedoes? And it says, um, section, uh, section 7, uh, subsection 4. A4, torpedo movement, oh, sweet, da da da, find it, uh, instead of just saying like, torpedoes, go to the index and look it up for yourself, <laughs> or control F torpedo, 350 words, just enter, 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 it's just a better way of laying things out, and I really like it, uh, charts are good, I'm a big fan of charts, I know some people aren't, we'll address that, but charts are really good, especially for me, because you just go, okay, this is my number, that's your number, that's what we're looking for. Or that's what I'm looking for. Uh, it, it, charts help, you know. It, it lets you simplify the actual play sheet. So you can just go, okay, well, these are all the st stats I need for my ships. These are all the stats you need for your ships. These are what my weapons look like. And then I can just cross-reference everything on charts. So I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of the layout of the book. I think the rules are quite clear. Uh, I don't know if there has been an FAQ published, but there's been no need for one. So... The ships and the guns are quite unique. So you've got um, rail guns, you've got gigawatt lasers, you've got, uh, you've got all sorts of cool stuff, plasma, uh, EPC weapons, and all the weapons have different damage profiles. So some of them go in and they sort of spread it at the base, some of them go in and then spread out and capitate. Uh, different weapons do different damages. 
and more powerful versions obviously do more damage. But uh, it's not like, well, I hit you with a rail gun and then I do 20 whole points of damage. It's not like that. It's not like, okay, I've hit you with my 6 gigawatt rail gun, which is a pretty standard rail gun, and it does 5 points of hull damage or whatever. So take 5 off your 100 hull points and then move on. It's, it's not like that. Uh, I'll discuss that later, but the, the way that the ships feel, they're all unique. So you don't just have light cruisers, destroyers, heavy cruisers... Oh, you're testing my naval knowledge here. Uh, battleships, pocket battleships. You don't just have that sort of stuff. You have uh, this class of cruiser, this class of destroyer. Uh, yeah, I know light cruisers and heavy cruisers, kind of technically, they're both cruisers in their subclasses. But anyway, you've got different classes of ship, and Jim's gone through and laid them all out. And uh, Jim's actually been kind enough to, to name one of them after me, one of the ships in a class after myself, because friends. And... Um, and Jim actually was kind enough to let me design some ships. They're not in the rulebook. They're just for my personal use, but uh, it's possible to do. I don't know <laughs> how possible it is for normal people, but it's possible for Jim. So there's always potential to add more classes uh, to the game. And there are different classes of ship. That means you're not just playing generic cruiser v. cruiser. You've got uh, British cruisers are very different to the German ones. Oh, it's, it's set in sort of a, I think like World War One era... So those sort of coalitions, but not really, because you've got all the Catholics together. British Empire, German Empire. Uh, it, 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 the law the law behind it is unique and interesting and cool, and far too intricate to go into right now. But basically you've got your sort of, think, think sort of World War One era powers, but with additions put onto it. So British ships are a certain way, Japanese ships are a certain way, American ships are a certain way. Uh, and they're all very unique, and they all have a cool feel to them. Number four, you can play campaigns with it. I'm a big fan of this. In my other videos and these sort of things, you, you'll probably hear me talk about campaigns a lot. I'm a big fan of campaigns, uh, at least being able to do them. Uh, I think if your system can't play campaigns, there's something wrong with your system. Or maybe not wrong, but I think you, you need to have a function in there to play campaigns with it. Because campaigns are a way that people can tell stories with stuff and they can make entertainment with it um not just for themselves for other people too uh, you know jim ran a campaign was it, i can't remember what it was called annabella war or something there was there was a campaign recently that he ran with some people uh which decided the fluff of ducks are not like the way games workshop did with storm of chaos where you know you just ignore all the results and you run your own campaign and you pretend that you're really playing with other people but uh storm of chaos was a storm of and it's some it's another kind of storm, if you know what I mean. Anyway, long story short. Shot. Anyway, it, you can do campaigns with it, and in fact, it's actually quite fun to do the campaigns with it. And you, you can really even do one-off battles with campaign characters. Uh, I ran a campaign pretty much the day it was released. I started playing a little mini campaign, sort of a, uh, a I based it on like a China-style. British V, some pirates, and that sort of thing. And it was fun. And uh, I put the first bit up on Beasts of War, and then I just kept playing games with my friends, and kind of got way too far behind, lost all of the files, didn't post the rest of it, so kill me. But anyway, uh, I've done a little campaign of my own. It was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> ships getting blown up. Ships doing cool stuff. Cool stories. It was. It's a lot of fun to play campaigns. And this system is perfect for campaigns. Number five, the ship destruction mechanics. So I'm going to put a picture up on here just to help illustrate my point. Uh, this is what a ship card looks like, or a ship, whatever, ship card, I'll call it. So you've got your armor boxes here, and the rest of the ship is all internal components. Um, the ones with the red outlining on them are really bad if they get blown up. So hits in the rear are really bad. You'll lose your reactors and your engines. Uh, if you lose your bridge, I'm pretty sure you're completely screwed. It's been a couple of months since I played, but I don't think you're, I think you may even be insta out. But anyway, uh, so you, for instance, get your port um, port mass drivers knocked off. They're your AA guns, so you're going to lose some AA power. If you lose one of your hangers, you're going to lose some hangers. You're going to lose some ship power. Uh, if you lose weapons uh, weapons coordination on one side, harder to shoot with. That sort of stuff. Um, so you, it's not like 
roll critical hit and then you blow up in the first shot. So I fire my six gigawatt railgun at a battleship and it like nails directly on this one point and super detonates the whole thing. It's not like that. You've really got to work to destroy stuff in Dark Star, which is good because then your own stuff doesn't get destroyed as often. Uh, almost rarely will you see stuff go supernova explosions. Happens. Uh, but you people, you'll very rarely see that. Almost certainly you'll be running long before that happens. I just, I, I love the way it's, it's set up because you've really got to worry about what you're targeting. So for example, if, if the ship, if the ship is really dented on the right hand side, like you've taken chunks of the armor out, you've exposed some of those soft underbelly bits, it might be worth taking an extra turn to just loop around that ship and hit that right hand side rather than just pounding away on the left. Whereas, for example, if you had done 70 hull points of damage to that ship and it turned its other side to you, I mean, you just do another 30 hull points of damage, right? But that, there's none how it works. It's, it's an actual destruction game where you're, you're taking apart the ship piece by piece. And it's really cool to say, okay, what happened when the, the, east, uh, the, the rail gun hit? Well, it sheared off this piece of armor and then it hit the, the, the mass drivers and detonated them. Okay, so I've lost some AA power. Okay, and then what? Well, then another four of them hit, and two of them hit further down and took more armor off, and then a third one punched through and, and took out one of our hangers. It's like, ah, oh, okay. It, it's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's a really cool way to do it. It's a quite interesting way. I'm sure it's existed before, but I've never played a game with that sort of mechanic. So, yeah, I love the, the destruction and damage mechanics. So three things that are a little bit, you know, iffy. Um, these aren't not all personally from me. Please don't kill me, Jim. Sit rep podcast. Not paid for promotion. Don't know how you would pay someone negative amounts of money, but anyway. Um, charts. Some people don't like having a lot of charts. <laughs> I'm not one of them, but I know some people look at a rule book with charts and they get turned off instantly. Uh, so that's that's a that's a factor that, that I don't know how you would fix, but I, it's something that, that people out there wouldn't like particularly very much. But for, for me, not an issue. Two. It's a bit of a learning curve. <laughs> Um, the, the game's a bit tricky to get your head around when you first start. Uh, once you get your head around it, though, you appreciate it. It's like, oh my goodness, look at all the cool stuff I can do. But the counter side to that is, oh my goodness, how the hell do I do anything? Um, after a few games, you quite quickly pick it up. But uh, this is probably not a game you could take to the club and be like, hey, everybody, let's, let's recreate this battle. Here's my two battleships. There's your two. Uh, let's get some cruisers going. Like, it, it's, it's something that you do need to start out slow. Number three, the, the dice and the physical models. So I'm not an RPG guy. Um, I played some Star Wars RPG that was a lot of fun. Uh, Five Rings RPG, 40k RPG, but I'm not an RPG guy. So I don't have the cool custom dice lying around. D4s, D6s, D8s, D10s, D12s. I think that's all you need, D12s. I think that's everything you need. Anyway, D10s you should have anyway because they're a cool dice and most games should be based on D10s. Anyway, that's my personal bias. Not this one, but most other games. Um, so I don't have a lot of those custom dice lying around, or I didn't have them, I since have got them. But, you know, that's, that's besides the point. Um, so it can be a little bit of an issue for someone to just grab and then be like, oh, I don't have any dice, let me use an app. I hate dice apps, that's just me. See, I suppose if you don't have the dice lying around, that could be a bit of a, a hurdle to entry. Also, there's no physical models. Um, Jim, actually, at the, the very end of the PDF shows you how to make your own, or how he made his own look fantastic uh, me having some autocad knowledge 3d designed a bunch of ships for myself printed them out painted them up here they are uh, i wish i had the little minis in front but i think i have them in storage still i want to print the uh the swedish knight i want to print one like this big and just hold it in my hands like a giant swedish knight but it'd be a nightmare it'd be very expensive i don't have a 3d printer so i have to get someone to do it for me anyway so unless you have the ability to design your own ships print them it's probably not going to be playing with ships. Um, you can always buy sci-fi ships somewhere. Buy naval ships and sci-fi them up, maybe. Make your own ships. Just use little tokens. Tokens work fine. Um, when we play online, Jim and I... Well, Jim and a bunch of people, but myself included. Um, this is pre-COVID we were doing this, so it's even perfect for a COVID game. I hope I get that little thing like COVID information below my video. That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, uh, you can play... Jim does it on Excel. Somehow. He's a wizard. You can do that sort of stuff. Um, and it's all just tokens on there, so I don't know. 
you can use tokens in real life if you want to do as well. Uh, tabletop Simulator is good for this sort of thing. It's quite easy just to land on a star map, put a grid over the top of it, get some tokens, and off you go. That's why I played my first few games. Uh, I never actually played any games with the models. I just built it for fun. To, to commemorate my fleet that I had in my first campaign, even though one of the ships was destroyed almost instantly. Anyway, so yeah, having a lack of access to models, I think, might turn some people off. But at the same time, just gives you more freedom. And I don't think Jim is going to be in a big rush to start commissioning artwork, models, renders, making those models, setting up a distribution network, selling them internationally, and then turning that into a full-time job. That doesn't sound like the kind of thing that I would be very interested in or Jim would be very interested in. Kind of sounds like a lot of work. So what makes it very special, apart from the fact that I know the creator and he does a very good podcast that you should definitely check out. Uh, well, if you feel like you're actually on a ship when you're playing this game. Again, I'm not a big fan of RPGs, but when you're talking about, okay, turn this far, okay, we've got we to gotta reduce our velocity, we've got to make a couple of turns and then speed back up again. And, oh no, our right side's really damaged and the enemy's on our right, let's flip the ship 180 and turn upside down. Or, you know, what, what's the damage report? Uh, we've lost a hangar and half the weapons on this side. Okay, okay, what do I do now? You, you really feel like you're actually on a ship. Uh, you're not taking hull damage, like as in, you're not taking points, you're not taking percentages, you're like, ah, oh, I've lost two reactors and an engine. The crew's probably not going to be very happy about that. I might have to leave right now, you know. Or or you, you get the sense you roll a one in a hundred, you know, ah, I got my morale test and I pass him sticking around and you just feel like, oh, the crew on this ship are just amazing. You actually feel like you're on a ship, uh, even in the far future. I think it's 26th century. Forgive me, Jim, I'm not, I haven't read the law in the past month or so. But, um, but yeah, you really feel like you're on a ship. Uh, you really feel like you're actually a space admiral uh, burning around the stars, getting involved in these sort of fights. You've got you to manage your velocity, so you can come on at whatever speed you want. I don't think there is a max speed for ships. Um, <laughs> never go above 20, but there's no max speed. So you're, you're balancing, do I come in fast, which I normally like to do. Do I hang back a little bit? Do I want to take some pot shots? Sneak some ships in? What are my destroyers doing? What are my corvettes doing? What am I corvette? That's the one I was looking for earlier. Anyway, um, what do I want to do with this sort of thing? So it's it's it's, it's a fun fun game, and you really do feel like you're there. If you want to check out Darkstar, I'll pop a link to the comments in the comments below or in the description below. We can download it for free. It's free. It's a big PDF. Um, again, if you can get some people in your club interested in this. It's a great fun game. You can do campaigns with it. You can tell cool stories. You can just jet around in spacecraft, blowing one another up. You can do orbital landing missions. It's, it's really, really is a fun game. And if you're, if you really want to play some naval games, but your friend just refuses to play historical naval games with you, maybe they'll play some sci-fi naval games with you. Who knows? So anyway, big thanks to Jim for the rules. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a wonderful day.